Ladies and gentlemen, boys and yeah, welcome to episode 187 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I am your host, Lewis Spears. I missed last week, sorry, but I've been very fucking busy doing a bunch of promo, working on some exciting, exciting projects and uh, overall just hustling for you, all right? So if you're, if you're here and complaining, oh, we missed an episode of the free podcast that we don't pay for, hey, you got something else, all right? It wasn't like I took that away and then gave you nothing, spit in your face. I took away speared Sundays and I gave you something else, all right? So, I, I appreciate your feedback and I'll take it on board and I'll try my best, all right? I'm uh, super glad everybody liked the Greeley podcast. That is, uh, congratulations, Greeley. Uh, highest performing podcast I've ever put out in my life. 14 or 15,000 views just on YouTube alone on that one. And then the clip we put out got fucking about 300,000 plays about that stupid prison fight. So if you haven't listened to the Greeley episode, go back. It's the previous one. It's really, really interesting. It's very, very good. And I'm super stoked that he's out and my friend is free. All right. So now I uh, am sitting here. Uh, at the warehouse, we're about to embark on the regional tour. And i it's just setting in, right? Now, I'm looking forward to the shows. Don't get me wrong. I love regional town shows. The thing about regional towns is uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of the news... Like, I live in Melbourne, right? So we're at the absolute peak of deciding the rules about what you are and are not allowed to joke about and laugh at, right? So if you go to Melbourne, I'll do a joke, it'll work. The next week, everyone will be like, oh, sorry, we just outlawed jokes about women three days ago. Get get with the times. And I'll be like, oh, fuck. Now I'm oppressing women because my joke that previously worked... Someone tweeted about it and it got 100 likes, so now we can't do that anymore, right? But none of that news reaches places like Ballarat, yeah? You'll, you'll say some heinous shit and they'll be like, oh, was, was that a joke or a serious statement? Because we genuinely believe that here. <laughs> the regional uh, tour has is, uh, is been a lot of fun. We've just start, we just did uh, Ballarat and uh, Warnable to kick it off, Luke and I. Uh, but, but that's fine, right? We drove there and then we drove back. So that's sweet, yeah? Drive there, drive home, sleep in your own bed. Now, what's about to happen is the real tour part of the tour is about to start. We're about to get into a fucking motorhome, an RV, right? Four men, three beds. And we are going to be spending an entire month in that RV. Four men, three beds. Did you do the math there? Have you done the math? Four men, three beds... 30 days. Have you done the math? Let me tell you what the answer is, right? Four beds, three men, 30 days. The answer is hell, right? Hell on wheels. That's what it's going to be. Four men, three beds. And the fucking tour manager, right? He accepted less money than he's actually worth because it's uh, we're fucking taking four people with us. It's an expensive operation. So we got to fucking, you know, give the professional tour manager a bit of a pay cut. Right? We negotiated that, but in return, he negotiated a bed for the whole trip. Right? So now, right? Three men, two beds, 30 days. Still not enough beds. We don't know what we're going to do. Have we planned for it? Right? Let me tell you about how much advance notice we've had about the bed situation. Right? Now, we found out about the RV two months ago. We found out about how many beds were in the RV two months ago. We found out how many people we were taking on two or three months ago. Now, have we done anything in those 60, 90 days to remedy the four-man, three-bed situation? The answer, again, is no. Because why would we plan for a fucking tour that we've known about for 60 days, when instead we could do stuff like, oh, have you have you uh, edited down the most recent video into 60 seconds so we can post it on TikTok? That's my fucking life right now. Cutting down long shit to put it on fucking TikTok. And you know what? You know what I'm really mad about? You know what I'm the most angry about is spending so much time making really high quality long form content for my YouTube channel, which I love doing and writing stand up bits and performing, which I love doing, right? The biggest problem about spending so much fucking time cutting down these masterpieces of, uh, you know, 10, 12 minute comedy pieces that I 
work so hard on every fucking day. The worst part about cutting these masterpieces down into dog shit 60 second videos for fucking TikTok and Instagram and Instagram stories and IGTV and Facebook. The worst fucking thing about that is that it works so well. I would be so relieved if cutting all of these fucking videos down into different formats didn't work at all, right? But it fucking works. It makes me so mad. Do you know how how much fucking time uh, Keelan has to spend cutting down? Uh, I I what I what I record this for an hour, right? And then I have to I have to go to Keelan. All right, uh, find the best sixty seconds from the fucking hour. And not only do I want to want you to grab those 60 seconds and cut it down, right? I also want you to make a square one, make a vertical one, and make a landscape one. And then what I want you to do is make subtitles and subtitle every single one of those things and Keelan can't spell. So not only, right, has he got the worst job in the world spending eight hours subtitling five different versions of a 60 second clip that we pulled from an hour long thing that I would prefer you to watch, the cunt can't even spell. So I have to go through all of it and check the words. Because for some reason in my operation, I'm the only cunt who reads. And who can spell. So the responsibility falls to me. Every time to spell check every fucking guy's work. And you know what the worst thing about this shit is? It works, which means we have to keep doing it. But if we didn't do that, you know, the clip from the Greeley podcast wouldn't have gone viral. And then Spearhead Sundays would not be sitting here with 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. So thank you to everyone who's come along. All of you fucking cunts with zero attention span, right? You couldn't be bothered risking on the, on the hour-long version of the podcast. So you were like, you know what? I'll watch 60 seconds only because it has subtitles. And that makes my lizard brain fucking read it. As words, I've got to finish reading them. Oh, because you know what you know what the subtitles are. They're not even. This is what I've worked out, right? Because uh, Luke kept going, why why do you put subtitles on stuff? You know, people can just listen with volume. And I say, I'll tell you fucking why. Because cunts are dumb, and and I do this as well. I'm not saying you guys are dumb. I'm saying that I'm an idiot. And you know what? So are you. Because if you're listening to this, right? If this entertains you, hey, guess what, bro? You're less intelligent than me. Absolutely. Uh, maybe not. See, there's two types. I reckon there's two types of people who listen to this podcast, right? And this goes for all my shit. Two types of people, right? The first type of person are the people who like me. This is most people, right? Most people like me, right? Because fuck, I love what Lewis says. He's real funny. He says, he says what I'm thinking. And he does shit that I don't have the nuts to do. That's inspiring. I love that shit. And, and also, he says, cunt heaps, that's great, right? Those people, right? And, and we're like the same level of intelligence, pretty much, yeah? Not too many cunts dumber than me. But, but most of these people watching, listening to my shit, we're about the same, yeah? And that's most of my audience. But I reckon there's a good 5%, 5 to 10% of cunts who watch me just go, ha, look at that idiot. Isn't that funny? He does dumb shit. What a moron. And that's the rest of you, right? See, man, do you see how, uh, how instantly I got humbled by my own logic? That, 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 that little tangent started off with, I'm smarter than everyone who listens. And then I just worked out, oh, actually, I'm uh, not at all. I, uh, I'm actually quite a bit of an idiot. Imagine, but there really are people out there who think that like, oh, people watch me because I'm smarter than them. Cunts actually think that shit. And you know why? Because it's fun to think that shit. It makes you feel good. Like, oh, that, that's the worst shit. When people build up audiences and then they, like, like, <laughs> for some reason, when they were sitting there, like, languishing with 300 subs and then someday they just hit a million and they're like, man, between those numbers, I gained 65 IQ points and I'm better than everyone else. It's like, no, bro. You just uploaded videos consistently, and that's all. You're not better than anyone. What, you think you're better than a fucking mechanic that stops cars crashing into families of four at the intersection because their brakes don't work? Let's be honest, bro. You put makeup on, okay? That's it. You're not changing the world. You're putting on mascara. You, you, you're not a humanitarian... 
You're a man with mascara on. And that's nothing wrong with a dude wearing mascara. If that's your jam, go for it. I remember when I was 16, I wore eyeliner for a little bit because I wanted to be unique. Now, did it get me any friends? No. Did it make a lot of people stare at me? Yes. And I only did it for three days, but I tried it out. So I'm... Don't come at me, right? With your, oh, you just fucking... Toxic masculinity. Hey, bitch, I was wearing makeup before it, before dudes were doing it on YouTube. I could have been James Charles. Could you imagine that? G'day, cunts. Today I'm going to show you how to do a smoky eye. <laughs> imagine that, right? If I was a fucking makeup guru. What I'm saying is, guys, if you, right, are a makeup beauty YouTuber, that's all you are. And that's something. I'm not saying that you're nothing. I'm just saying that if your job is showing nine-year-old girls how to do makeup, right, and then making them feel shit because they feel like they have to wear makeup and then making them spend all of their money on makeup and products that they don't really need uh, because you're sponsored by those products and you want to make another million dollars instead of just three million dollars this year, that's fine, right? That's what you do and there's nothing wrong with that apart from the fact that perhaps, maybe... You're ruining women or soon to be women, but that's debatable, right? What I'm saying is if you're a makeup guru, that's all you are. You're not also a humanitarian, you're just a makeup guru. So don't think you're better than everyone who watches you because, hey, you're just a cunt wearing mascara. And that's all. So anyway, I've had a good week, guys. Uh, I really have. Uh, I want to say, hey, I want to say a big thank you to everyone who came out to uh, in Sydney to the cinema premiere of my secret TV pilot. Uh, that is going to be announced. What's the date? Oh, you guys are going to be stoked on the... T oh, when am I doing it? I'm doing it this month. Am I doing it on the 12th? I think I might be doing it on the 12th. Could be the 19th. Stay tuned. I should fucking check that. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing, man gonna be one of those episodes if you are if in case you guys are wondering uh it's gonna be one of those episodes where i ha i don't know what i'm fucking doing i'm sitting here at 9 32 p.m in the warehouse right after i've had a, a conference call right i shouldn't talk about that look <laughs> i'm very grateful for the opportunity right and i'm stoked and i can't wait for the people to see it and it's a very good thing for me but also I got a calendar invite earlier today for a conference call, right? For a thing that I'm doing for a with another company, right? Really cool, super great. It's not the Super Bowl, right? Because I'm not rice gum, but it's still pretty cool. What am I doing? Oh, that's right. Um, but it's still pretty cool, right? So. I get invited to a conference call. Pretty standard. If you do a brand deal, if you have to organize a show. Conference calls, that's the, that's, that's the mission. Yeah, that's what you're doing. So, 18th of... What am I doing? 18th of Feb. Yeah, 18th of February. That's where I'm at when I'm announcing the TV pilot. So what's that? Fucking... Next week sometime. Or two weeks from now. Who knows? Right? So, conference call. Yeah? Fairly standard. What do you think a conference call is? What? Three people? Conference. Four people? Yeah. Five? Bit much. Too much. Four max. Right? Me, you, your business partner. Me, you, your business partner, my business partner. That's all. Four maximum. That's a conference call. I had a conference call with 11 people. 11 cunts. Video as well. 11 people. A video conference call with 11 people. Why were they all there? Do you know how many people talked? Me, two other people. Why were there nine listeners? Wait. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's twelve, right? Why were there eight listeners? <laughs> See, there I go again, right? Thinking that I am smarter than most of my listeners, but proving that I can't even do eight plus three. Right? No shit. Eleven people. But you know what's good though? Oh, I'm trying to plug my shit in. You know what's good though about being talent, right? I ha I hate being called talent, but that's what it is in the industry. Is all you they're the talent because that you know what that implies? That implies that like 
I'm the only one with any kind of skill, right? Like, me, a man who gets on stage and says the most horrible things he can think of to make people laugh, right? That's my skill, is making you laugh at shit that you probably should not laugh at and should never repeat at work. Let's be honest, my skill is dick jokes, yeah? Dick jokes. That's my skill, right? And I'm sitting in a meeting with... 11 people, right? So 10 other people, right? Someone's uh, spent their whole life studying marketing or fucking uh, tour production or this or that. Maybe someone's a, a videographer or a fucking director, this and that. And I'm the cunt, right? Me. The guy who can't even do eight plus three is the only one in the call who gets called the talent. I always used to get called talent when I worked in radio. Oh, you guys are talent, so you don't have to come to this meeting. You guys are talent. You guys are talent. And and then meanwhile, there's like people, there's like 300 other employees and they're just, oh, they're just marketing. I'm talent. That's, that is, uh, honestly, I reckon that's why people in my position just end up thinking that they're better than everyone else because uh, people treat you like, some people treat you like that. It's fucking weird. Like I, ha I like I, you know, I, I didn't come from money, and I, I've always had a job until I could, you know, pay my rent with dick jokes. And it always fucking weirded me out when other people with jobs would just treat you like fucking royalty. It's so strange. I'm like, hey, I'm just a guy. So anyway, on the 18th, man, thanks to everyone who came out to my uh, my premiere. It was so much fun. We did it at a cinema in Sydney. Really, really good. And the feedback that I got, dude, let me tell you, bro, 2020 is my fucking year. Uh, I've, I've been spending the whole of January, like, just ramping up and locking shit in and getting it all ready. 2020 is my year, man. Uh, we got these, these big tour, the Melbourne Comedy Festival just went on sale, and, uh, I got this TV pilot coming out this year, uh, next couple of weeks, you guys are gonna see the poster, and the trailer, and the title, and the concept, and everything, it's fucking great, and if you saw it in Sydney, you guys are gonna know this shit is my best work, this is the, the project, for all of these people who've been like, oh man, when are you gonna go back to the old school stuff, when are you gonna fuck with the news, when are you gonna do the trolling, this is it, this is it, bro. So I'm not going to spoil too much, but it's it. This is what it is. Uh, uh, I'm going to be taping a comedy special this year as well. Uh, I'm coming for that round two. I'm ready to top death threats. Don't scare me. I've got the show, right? Uh, it's the So what I'm doing is this regional tour. It's a bit of a run-up. The regional tour is the run-up to the comedy festival. And the comedy festival in Melbourne is the run-up to the special taping. I've decided on the city. I will announce it soon. Uh, but you guys are going to be stoked, right? Because uh, the first one I did in Melbourne, my hometown, the next one, I'm going to do it in my favorite place to perform stand-up. Uh, you probably know where it is, right? If you've seen me perform there, because whenever I perform there, I tell you. Now, if you've seen me and I haven't said, this is my favorite city, you know why? Because I only say it in my favorite city. I'm not like these other artists, right? I'm not out there lying. Oh, hey, Melbourne, you're the best place to perform. Or, you know when Americans come out, hey, Melbourne. You guys are the best city in the world. We love to play in Melbourne. It's our favorite city. And it's like, cunt, I know you've done Times Square. There's no way 3,000 people in Melbourne is better than fucking however many cunts you can fit in Times Square in New York. I know it's not as good. Don't lie to me. I'm not a fucking idiot. Because I'll tell you something, right? I love my hometown in Melbourne, right? But I definitely got my favorites when I travel. <laughs> Melbourne's up there, but it's not number one, you know? That being said, because I'm doing the comedy festival, guys, I'm so stoked to announce I'll be performing at the Melbourne Comedy Festival, my favorite place to perform in the world. Um, tickets are on sale now, loosespears.com slash gigs. I'm doing the full three weeks. That is 23 shows in a row. I've never done that many shows in a row in one city in my life. So it's going to be fucking big. Uh, the people are going to come out and uh, I feel good, man. I'm really, I'm really bringing back that, the audacity, dude. I'm bringing audacity back to comedy. I'm so sick of cunts just doing like safe, silly shit that means nothing. I'm coming for the, I'm coming for the gut. I'm coming for what's going to make people laugh, no matter what. 
No matter what the fucking rules are, no matter what you can and what you can't say, I'm coming for what's going to make the people laugh. I know what makes them laugh. I've been doing this shit for a long time. I know what I like. I know what people like. And I'm breaking the fucking rules because I don't need TV. I'm doing it. You don't need TV to make TV. Wait till I drop my pilot. You know, we, we left radio. Luke and Lewis is on the come up. We're doing better than ever. We just hired a second person. We left radio. I don't need TV. I don't need media. I don't need none of this shit. So I don't, I don't need to follow any of the fucking rules. I'm coming for funny, right? And the festival, hey, it's not going to put us, it's not going to, you're not going to see it on the gala, right? You're not going to see it in fucking town hall. They're not going to put you in the best venues, whatever. I don't care. I'm coming for funny. I'm coming to bring the people what they fucking want. So loosespears.com slash gig. Spears on stage is on sale now. Uh, you, uh, if you come and see, it's the best of my last three years. So it's my fucking golden top shelf shit. Essentially what I'm doing at the festival is I'm going to be performing what I will eventually tape for my comedy special 23 nights in a fucking row. So this is my best of the best. So last year, Death Threats Don't Scare Me, I only got to perform it four times in New Zealand before I actually taped the thing. This year, 23 nights in a fucking row. So you really are going to see me in my prime. Because I've spent the last three years on this material. And I will have just come off the uh, the regional tour, which is like 13 dates straight into Melbourne. Not, not rusty at all. So it's going to be fucking great. And also what's cool is uh, myself and Luke Kidgel are doing the same venue back to back. So Luke's doing, uh, Luke's doing, I can't remember. He's doing an hour before me. It's eight something. And then I'm doing nine ten. So I think Luke might be at 8 PM or eight ten, And then straight after that uh, is my show. So if you want to come see us both, just book on the same day. It's at the same theater. You just fucking Go out, meet Luke, come back in, see me perform. It's going to be fucking sick. I, I recommend you doing them both back to back because Luke's got some great shit too. And we're both very different uh, stand-ups. So, so you get to see that juxtaposition, I suppose. Um, but yeah, man, I'm fucking... I'm so ready for this shit. 2020 is going to be so good. I've really leveled up as a comedian. My channel's going well. Everything's going great. And uh, yeah, I can't fucking wait. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be good. It's been. I feel like this year has been uh, a long time coming, if you know what I mean. So uh, really, really great stuff. Grab your tickets now and stay tuned for that TV pilot, bro. Are you, are you man? I'm not even going to say any more until it's coming out. Right. What do I want to talk about here? So ah, I closed my podcast notes to look at my fucking dates when this pilot's coming out. Where are we? Oh, good. It's frozen. Love that. Love that for me. Um... Where are we here? What's been happening in the fucking world? Oh, dude, I I saw some um, I saw some real racist shit on the train. Like you, you know, I you very rarely see like real racism. You know, like you see uh, what I'm talking about. Obviously, racism it's alive and well, but it's like alive and well in like unconscious bias. You know what I mean? Like your mum will say something and she doesn't even know that that's fucked. Yeah, or your dad will be like, oh, yeah, so I was with this, and he'll just chuck in a racial slur, and you'll be like, whoa, that was in conversation. Is this real? You'll be talking to your grandpa, and you'll be like, oh, fuck. I mean, I understand it because of, you know, the war, but shit. Lots of people out there still think that, huh? Right? You know that You know that shit. Like, they, like it's not like, I hate this race. It's more like just unconscious shit. I saw some real shit, bro. You know when you you know when you see like real racism it makes you just go oh fuck twitter doesn't know what it is you know like that's when i saw that like actual nazi out in public like a real one where like literally wearing a swastika i, I saw a, like a guy who was going hello i believe in this so i'm going to wear the armband i saw a real one right Never seen one in my life. I, all I saw was just cunts getting called a Nazi on Twitter because they're like, um, I, I don't know, I think the wage gap is actually more due to lifestyle choice than women actually getting paid less because if you look at the statistics, uh, women actually work less. A lot of the time it's due to uh, motherhood and maybe that does have something to do with 
you know, the culture and maybe we could change that to, to bring in more for more paternity leave. But a lot of the time, you know, women women uh, work less and, oh, you fucking Nazi, that kind of shit, right? That's what you see. But then you see a real one and you're like, oh, that's different. That's fucking different. Like I'm watching the, the World War uh, documentaries at the moment. Dude, so good. I'm on another tangent. Here we fucking go. Woo! I'm watching the World War documentaries that... um the History Channel made, it's like a six-part series, they're all an hour long, it's real high budget for a fucking history document, World War II documentary, there's acting in it that actually isn't bad, it's shocking, it came out a couple years ago, highly recommend you watch it, it's fucking fascinating, it goes all through World War I, and then straight into World War II, and then I, I believe it covers the aftermath, I'm only halfway through it, but fucking fascinating viewing, right, I definitely recommend you watch it, so good. Um, and, and it just gets me going, oh shit, when you call someone a Nazi on Twitter, that really, really waters down what that word means because they did some horrible shit. I mean, they really fixed the public transport system in Germany. They got the trains on point, but other than that, you know, they didn't really do many good things. I don't know if you've noticed, they didn't do that many good things. I mean, the train system fucking nailed it, but other than that, Pretty fucking horrendous stuff, but let me tell you, if you want to get somewhere on time and you don't have a car, oh, it's going to happen, but other than that, right? And that's a lot, but it doesn't really overshadow the Holocaust. That's what I'm saying, all right? <laughs> I love, I love that, that German people are so fucking efficient. Like, they are so efficient that... that that they created a train system that was so good, they were just like, ah, oh, we'll, we'll get rid of everything, but we'll, we'll keep the trains. <laughs> like, oh, this works. Like, that's how good it is. They're like, get rid of everything. We need to repent. This is horrible. We've got to pay reparations until fucking 2001. But... What about the trains? You know, the trains where they transported all those... Yeah, I know. Yeah, but... We'll keep them. But get rid of everything else. Get rid of everything else because we blew it, right? Everything else we've got to get rid of. You know, we caused we caused World War II, the Holocaust, Nazism. We've got to get rid of it. It's disgusting. We have to repent and we have to redeem ourselves in the world in the in the eyes of the world so get rid of everything that hitler built and and destroy all of the nazi stuff what about um what about uh volkswagen oh we'll keep that because that's fucking we nailed that shit hey <laughs> what am i talking about oh yeah it makes you go when you see when you see like shit like that in real life you realize how how all of these fucking Twitter journalists and celebrities are just living in such a safe bubble, you know? Like, I, I had a comment uh, underneath the, the post uh, about Greeley uh, from some guy who was just, like, so clearly in a bubble of, like, oh, this guy's a fucking criminal. He's scum. He assaulted someone. Why would you ever have him on the fucking show? It's like, cunt, he did his time. What do you want? He fucking... He did it, he admitted that it was bad, he went to prison, and he did a lot of good things in prison, and now he's doing a lot of good things outside of prison. What the fuck do you want? Like, if someone goes to jail for a fight, what, we're supposed to just outcast them from, from society, make sure they can never work again, call them scum even after they've served their time and admitted their mistake and tried to do better for the world? Is that what we're supposed to do? Just fucking completely alienating someone over a fucking mistake? Is that the answer? I don't think it is because you know what? It doesn't fucking work. It just makes people go, oh, well... I fucking serve my time and everyone still hates me. I guess there is zero benefit for trying to rehabilitate myself. I'm a criminal forever. That's what that shit does. You know, that's like that shit when you cancel cunts on Twitter because of shit they said in 2009 when they were 12. Bro, I wore mascara when I was 16. I ain't doing that shit now, am I? Nah. Were you going to cancel me for that shit? I've learned my lesson. 
Not going near makeup. I fucking wish I never went away from it, dude. I would be... Have you seen that cunt's mansion? James Charles? Dude. That guy's mansion is almost as good as his ass. And that's not gay. Right? Fellas, it's not gay to look at James Charles' ass and go, Huh. That's not. I'll stand up for it. I'm saying it right now. James Charles, you got a nice ass. And I'm a 100% straight male and I will never, ever want to go anywhere near it. But I can look at it on Instagram, see it pop up in my feed. I won't go hunting for it, right? Little caveat there. I'm not going to look for it. But if it pops up in my feed like it did when you went to Coachella or whatever fucking festival that was, right? When it popped up in my feed, I went, huh, that man has a nice ass, and I'm comfortable in my sexuality, and I never want to fuck him, but I will say this, James Charles, he's got a nice ass, I've seen a lot of women out there, seen a lot of asses, James Charles, you're up there, buddy, good on you, champ, and that's the straightest way to compliment another man on their figure, is you just go, hey, champ. You chuck champ in there, whatever you were going to say becomes straight. That's the no homo of complimenting a man. Champ. Hey, champ. Nice ass. Hey, champ. Huge cock. That's straight as fuck. You can't say champ and then also be gay. It's never been done. There's never been a gay man who says champ. Doesn't exist. Hey, champ. Want to fuck? Hey champ, let's have homosexual intercourse. That sounds straight, let's be honest. If you walked up to a guy at a fucking nightclub, if you went to Poof Doof and and you walked up to a gay man and you went, Hey champ, do you want to have sex? That man would say, Whoa, I don't do straight guys and walk away. Now, if that man was James Charles, he would go, oh, I absolutely love straight guys. <laughs> and he would go in there. Champ would turn him on. But that's what I'm saying, right? James Charles, nice ass, champ. And that's it. That's the straightest shit I've ever said in my fucking life. What am I talking about? Oh, yeah. I saw some real racist shit. How long are we going here? 32 minutes. I'm into it. I'm into the groove now. I, had my, I was a little bit flustered at the start, right? But as soon as I started talking about James Charles having a nice ass, champ, I'm back in. I'm back in the game, right? So I saw some real racism on the train, right? And this story, a lot of twists and turns. It's going to fucking, it's, it's got its ups, it's got its downs. It's a bit of an emotional roller coaster. fucking strap in, right? So I saw some real racism, real overt, in front of everyone, loud racism, right? So I'm on the train. Yeah, and uh, I'm going towards the city and I'm coming from not a good area. Now, uh, I would say 12 Sudanese girls get on the train. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking, right? You're thinking, oh no, someone's going to say something horrible to these girls. Hey, you assume too much. Strap in, my friend, right? So I'm on the train, real quiet. It's a weeknight. So everyone's just either going home or going to the city. It's, it's like 5, 6 p.m., I think, right? 12 Sudanese g- girls get on the train. Dude, I'm, I always knew because of Twitter, right? There's a stereotype that black girls are loud. And I always thought, ah, that's a stereotype. But every now and then, right, you, you come to realize that some stereotypes exist because they're just real. 12 Sudanese girls get on the train the loudest shit I've ever heard in my fucking life, right? Not complaining, right? Because it was a very festive form of loud. They were like, maybe they looked like 18, 19. They were dancing. They were yelling. They weren't being like a menace. They were just fucking playing music and going, hey, 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 pretending they're American, right? That shit. So they're doing that, filming themselves, twerking. I'm trying not to look, right? Uh, But let's be honest, right? There are a couple of James Charles level asses in there and I, and I was loving it, champ. Right? So I'm I'm watching but not watching. You know what? You know how it is. People watching that shit. So I'm watching that. They're all being really loud and it just gets louder and louder and louder. Everybody else on the train is fucking real pissed. I just find 
it very amusing. Everyone else is very angry because it's so fucking loud. And they have a point, incredibly loud. They're being like the most disrespectful you can be on a train. So I thought, right? Everyone else is pissed. I find it very amusing because I know that some shit's going to go down and I'm going to see something and next Sunday's podcast is going to be fucking great. Yeah? So I'm watching this go down. 12 girls having a party on the fucking train weeknight. They're all a little bit drunk, clearly, right? But they're, you know, having a messy night. Who am I to stop them? The PSOs, uh, public safety officers, if you're in not in Australia, they're, they're, uh, what they are is they are ticket inspectors who think they're police. They dress up in police uniforms and they're there for safety, but really they're there to fine you. Uh, initially, they were brought in to... Uh, maintain the safety of train platforms, which I was all for. I think that's a great idea. You know, it's a waste of police resources to have cops at all the train stations every fucking night. But let's set up a new security guard organization, keep everyone safe. Even just the presence makes me feel safer when I'm coming home after a gig. I love that, right? I bet women really appreciate it too. But then, right, six months after they introduced them and all of the train stations got safer and everyone loved the fucking thing, the train companies are like, all right, Let's give them ticket scanners, and now they can fucking fine you. Public safety officers can fine you. Ridiculous shit. Anyway, the PSOs get on the train, and they start, one of the guys just, he has like, he's had enough. Yeah, I think, look, might be a bit of a theme with Sudanese chicks getting on the train and just being super loud. Or at least that's what this PSO officer seemed like because he seemed like it was a routine, everyday fucking drill, yeah? So he gets on the train and he goes, Hey, girls, shut up. There are other people on the train. You're being inconsiderate. You are not the only per- people on the carriage. If you don't shut up, they're going to pull you off at the next station. And I'm going, they are not going to shut up. This is going to be fucking sick, right? And they all go, Oh, we're sorry, sorry. Sorry about that. And then the doors shut and then they go, hey, 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 hey. They kept doing this shit where they would say something like really obnoxious. And then and then one of them would go, and that's on what? And then all of the other 11 girls would go, and that's on period. And that's on what? That's on period. And now I've just started doing it. That's on what? That's on period. They just kept saying that shit. I don't know why they were saying it, but fuck, now I'm saying it. And now you know what? You're saying it too. That's on what? That's on period, right? So they're doing that shit. Hey, hey, hey. Men ain't shit. And that's on what? That's on period. He doesn't deserve you, girl. And that's on what? That's on period. They were just doing that the whole time, super loud, while also playing music and shaking their asses. I'm loving it. It's great. It's entertaining. Uh, Every single other person on the train fucking hating it, right? Here's where the racist shit comes in. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, what what kind of hardcore uh, racist person is going to have a go at the Sudanese girls? Wrong! You assumed wrong, bro. I saw it from them. Sudanese girls did the most racist shit I've ever seen in my life. Crazy, right? So, they're fucking around. They're walking up and down the carriage, being loud, doing all that kind of shit, disrupting everyone, being generally rude, but I didn't give a fuck. I thought it was entertaining. Uh, and then this Asian guy, uh, is sitting there and he's got his face mask on, right? Because, you know, that's Asian culture. It, you know, I, I learned, I looked it up. The masks don't actually stop you from getting sick. It's actually much better at stopping you from infecting other people. So for them to wear it, just consider it. So it's really good that they wear that. And we should all be thankful that they're out there wearing their fucking masks. Because now, even if they don't get the fucking coronavirus, if they have a cold, they're not going to give it to me, right? Now, am I going to wear a mask when I get sick? The answer is no. And that's on what? That's on period. (laughs) Because I'm an inconsiderate cunt. And also, let's be honest, if you saw a guy who's six foot eight wearing what I wear, but also with his face covered, you'd think that you're about to fucking die. I'm about to rob the gas station that I walk into. Not that I ever walk into a gas station, because do I have my license? No. And that's on what? That's on period. (laughs) So anyway, Asian guy sitting there, facing away from them, facing me, got his little fucking SARS mask on. I don't know what they're called. And then one of the girls sits opposite to him next to her friend, who's 
also opposite to him. And then there are now seven girls behind him shaking their asses and chanting and whatever. And then they all kind of congregate around the two girls that are sitting down and they're being loud and talking and dancing and going, hey, hey, and that's on what? That's on period. And then one of them turns around and sees the Asian guy and goes, ew, a Asian, yuck. And then they all start going, ew, an Asian, gross, yuck. And they all run away from the poor cunt. And I just see this pained look in his eyes of, oh, fuck. It was so racist. Like, so aggressively racist. Just going, yelling in a poor guy's face, going, yuck, an Asian. It was, like, so disgusting. I've never seen such overt racism. But what was interesting about it was... Because it was from Sudanese women, the the rest of the train had no idea what to do because it's fucking Melbourne and everyone's adding up the fucking privilege chart trying to work out who where the power dynamic stands, right? Because if I did that shit, the whole train would have risen up against me and gone, oh, you fucking evil straight white male, how dare you oppress uh, an Asian man. But because it was Sudanese women and it was an Asian man, everyone was like, I don't know who the oppressor is here. I don't know if they're punching down, punching up. Maybe he deserves that. Did, did China oppress Sudan? Who knows? Who knows what's going on? So he just find it kind of fucking took it and it really hurt his feelings. And then one of the Sudanese girls goes, oh, don't worry. I'm really sorry about my friends. There's nothing wrong with being Asian. And then he looks a little bit happier. And then she finishes the sentence with, just don't cough on me because you've got coronavirus. <laughs> and that's on what? That's on period from all of the girls. I've never seen such racism in my life. It was fucked, right? And then they ended up getting pulled off by the PSOs at the train station. I don't know what happened to them. I don't think you, I don't think you can arrest 11 girls. Could you imagine the chaos just running out of handcuffs? You can't arrest me. And that's on what? That's on period. So yeah, that was my eventful week. Touring, overt racism. You'd think, you know, being on a regional tour, I would have seen it there. <laughs> Fuck, I love regional towns, man. We've been, uh, we've been, what we're doing is we're, we're visiting a lot, right? And places I've never been before. So uh, I'm really excited to just do, you know, just like my best shit uh, there. It's real fun. Um, but what I love is just the suggestions that we get after the show. We always ask, oh, what's, you know, what's to, what is there to do in your small town? We're, we're in Warrnambool, right? For all you international listeners. Yes, that's a real place. Warrnambool. W-A-R-R-A-N. Warrnambool. I don't know how to spell it, right? We're in Warrnambool. And someone messages, like, dude, boys, if you have a free day, i got the best thing for you to do. You have to go and check out The Gap. And I was like, I don't want to go to the fucking Gap, the clothing store. I went to The Gap in New York. It's just like H&M, Target shit, cotton on, like just shitty fucking basic clothes. I don't want to go to The Gap. I thought that was just a joke about like what Luke wears because he dresses so basically. I'm like, I don't want to go to The Fucking Gap. Uh, and then Luke didn't know about the American clothing store, The Gap. So he Googles he Googles it. And I'm like, what are you fucking looking at The Gap for? He goes, oh, I think we could go. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. If I got to watch you buy one more fucking maroon t-shirt, I'm going to kill myself. Right? But it wasn't that. And he finds out that The Gap is literally a gap. Right? This is their biggest attraction in fucking Warnable. There's a place where one store was a really old building, and then a really new building was built right next to it, but they didn't build it properly, and there's a very, very narrow gap between these two really long buildings, maybe like, maybe 50 meters long, pretty long, right? Maybe even more. I think it might be more than 50 meters. Very long. Length of a long building, right? And this tiny little gap that gets progressively smaller and smaller and smaller, and the challenge in this regional town is try to get from one side of the gap to the other without having to call the fire brigade. Now, I don't think that there has ever been a task more suited to my physique in my life. The gap, you got to be slim. I'm nailing that, dude. I will kill that shit. What, I got to be narrow? Done. 
they weren't fucking kidding. So we go, we go to the gap, we get through, we, we try to, well, we try to get through, we start going through, uh, about halfway through, I'm having the time of my life, right? Very difficult. Let me give you an idea of how narrow it is, right? When we got halfway through, my back and my chest were touching both sides of the brick wall. I couldn't inhale all the way. That's how fucking narrow it was. Halfway through, I'm laughing because it's so difficult and funny and stupid. Luke realizes he's claustrophobic. <laughs> Starts having a fucking panic attack. I think we need to turn around. I'm like, no way, man. We came halfway. We're fucking going through. How funny would it be if we had to call the fucking fire brigade? We ended up getting through. We're going to put that out in the vlog, the Luke and Lewis vlog, I think. We filmed a bunch of stuff. It's very, very funny. But yeah, that was the gap. And I just love that, that, that was, that's the most notable thing to do in a fucking regional town is just try to get through two buildings. Let's be honest. You guys are lucky to have two buildings. <laughs> All right, uh, now it's time, right, getting towards the end of the podcast here, it's time uh, to do miscellaneous bit at the end of the podcast. If you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end is where I answer emails sent in um, by listeners of the podcast. If you, need a, if you need some life advice, if you have a dilemma, if you have a funny story you want to tell me, send it through to podcast at lewspears.com and uh, I will... Uh, answer it. Um, okay. We got a good one here. Uh, hmm. Okay. <laughs> we got a lot of fucking good emails. If you want to send one through, podcast at lewespears.com. It looks like we'll only have time to do this one. I'm going to do this one. Right. This one. This email is entitled Swinger Escapade. Hey, Lewis. Uh, I won't start with the regular blowing smoke up your ass about your illustrious career. Uh, this is a wild one, so I'll just jump right into it. Thanks, Philly D. So, around August last year, I started a TAFE course. It was a class full of dudes with one exception, a middle-aged mother. <laughs> Here we fucking go. The months passed in the course, and eventually she confided in me that she was a swinger. I was fine with that, to each their own mentality and all that. That's good, man. Have an open mind. You don't really find that in TAFE. Then, around November, we started texting about the course and everything, and she just bursts out and said she had a sex dream about me, and quote, can't even look at you without getting wet. Oh no. Someone is going to have to fuck a mother! Um, I hate that she's got kids. I'm an, I am 19 years old. So obviously I engaged in 19 year old male behavior and saw an opening for a route and jumped on it. Yeah, that's great fun, man. Until you realize the marriage has been broken apart and you've ruined the childhood of a poor innocent being. We had sex a couple of times, and after one especially intense session, she rolls over and says, So, I was talking to my husband about us, and he said that he wants to watch us next time. Oh no, fuck bro. Why does... How many people listen to this podcast and fuck someone else's wife? I swear, I get this fucking email so often. You know, sometimes I've read a story about someone fucking someone else's wife and I don't read it because it wasn't that different from the last email. This is like, if, if you're like a fuck, this is the podcast for alpha males, right? If you're out there fucking someone's wife, check out Spearhead Sundays because we've got a community going on. And, and you know what? If you're a wife and you want to get fucked, email the podcast. I'll hook it up. I got a bunch of young bulls. <laughs> oh, fuck. This is such a, this is such a like weird community that just seems to gravitate towards my content is just people who fuck each other, someone else's wives. Again, being a horny 19 year old, I agreed. As long as my dick was getting wet, right? <laughs> I think you may come to regret that, sir. So we continued fucking with the husband watching and pleasuring himself during the act, dude. Eventually, the novelty wore off, and having a middle-aged dude moan and groan at me while I fucked his wife was getting a little off-putting. It was now Christmas by this point, and I got invited to their Christmas party. What the fuck? 
Dude, you're gonna rock up and make their make their mum, meet this child's grandparents. Hi, uh, this is uh, Christine, uh, and this is Christine's husband, and this is Jono who fucks Christine while Christine's husband watches. What you see now? See the real dilemma here is, uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> the real dilemma here is what do you get them for Christmas? You know, like you don't want to, you don't want to get anything too fancy, nothing too sentimental because you don't want to get involved with their, their marriage, right? You're just in there for, you know, fucking and sucking. That's what you're there for. You're not there for Christmas, you know, like what do you get them for Christmas? What do you get the man whose wife you've been having sex with for months? What's the perfect gift for him? Oh, I know. A tissue box. <laughs> One for the cum and the other for the tears. Fuck. Dude, I don't, I don't understand that, that shit. Watching someone else fuck your wife. I don't get that. I, here's the thing. I understand maybe, right, why they would enjoy it in the moment. I would never, but some, but you know, you have your horny thing and you're like, this is great. And then you finish and you're like, this is horrible. Everyone has that, that thing that they're into when they're in the mood. And then when they're out of the mood, they're disgusted by, I imagine a lot of swingers, right? Are into that like that. Yeah. So they like it in the moment, but then what, what I I don't, I, I, maybe I understand enjoying it in the moment. What I don't get is like, just, just the, just like three months later. When, when you just, you're fucking, I don't know, loading the dishwasher together. And you just think, oh, remember when that happened? I don't know. I don't understand how you take those memories back into your domestic life. Anyway. It was now Christmas by this point, and I got invited to their Christmas party. The invite came, came with her saying, it's one of my parties. So I thought it was going to be a normal meetup and route. Oh, like a swingers party. Boy, was I wrong. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, so hang on. So it is what I thought it was. It's just a family Christmas. It's not a swingers Christmas. Dude. So the day of the party, I got everything set. Condoms, lube, Viagra, the classics. And I ended up being a little bit late. When I got to her music, there was... When I got to her house... When I got to her house, there was music blaring from inside, so I just walked right in. As soon as I opened the front door, I see a pile of naked humans. Oh, good. Fuck. So you're surprised by that. Oh, thank God. Dude, you don't want to go to a family Christmas, man. I instantly knew one of, one of her parties must have been a swingers party. Before I could turn around and leave, she saw me and rose from the pile and practically lunged at me before pulling me into the lounge room. Everything happened so fast, and before I knew it, I was p participating in a massive orgy. Hours later, I wandered out onto the street, confused, drunk, and exhausted, before make making my way home. It's been weeks since we we spoken, but suddenly out of the blue, she messages me and says her husband wants to know when we are hooking up next. I don't know how to tell her that I don't want to keep hooking up, and I really don't and I really extra don't want to participate in any more swingers parties. How do I break up with this married swinger couple? How do I escape? Have a shit one. Oh, really out of my my fucking field of expertise here. How do you break up with 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 a, with our relationship? I don't know, man. I think it should be pretty easy, right? I mean, there's sounds like there's no emotional connection. It's just purely physical. So it sounds like you guys are doing everything by the book. I would just say, hey, sorry. Uh, I, uh, I, don't, I don't really want to participate. It was fun while it lasted, but uh, I think it's time for me to move on and for you to do the same. Thanks, I had fun. Thanks for the great time. Uh here's some tissues for your husband because I, I I imagine he'll be devastated <laughs> oh, fuck yeah I wouldn't be too stressed about it I would just be honest just say hey I, I had a lot of fun uh, with you guys um, but I think this chapter of my life is over I'm growing up 
and uh, it's time for me to to move on and into different areas of my life and maybe try to find someone. Thank you very much. Uh, I had fun, but uh, I think it's time to close this chapter of my life. Hope you enjoy the rest of yours. And then just step out gracefully. That's what I would do, man. You know, pretty simple shit. But definitely send me an update. Podcast at loosebeers.com. I want an update about this story. And if uh, you want to send me an email, podcast at loosebeers.com is the way to do it. Uh, perfect example of a nice email from this gentleman. And uh, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Make sure you uh, grab tickets to my Melbourne Comedy Festival show. It's on sale now. And please do check out the trailer. Uh, I'm really, really happy with um, the video that we made. It's uh, it's like a crime boss meeting of me, Pinger Pete, uh, and MC Esche, formerly known as MC Grabbins Ad Pay. I just thought that that name was too fucking long so I changed it to Eshe uh, much simpler makes more sense so um, check that out it's really funny I love writing dialogue I've realized I really like writing funny dialogue um, and that's like that's just like fucking six minutes of the funniest I could be with just people talking so check that out I'm real proud of that and Connor Fairclough from Verve Pictures smashed that out of the park uh, we're doing some really great shit He's the one behind my TV pilot too. So if you like to look at that, imagine how the fucking pilot's going to look, all right? So grab your tickets, loosebeers.com slash gigs. Um, my Melbourne dates are on sale now. It's March and April. Starts March 27, I believe. Uh, and regional towns, I'm going to be in... Uh... Oh, well, by the time you listen to this, I will have already done Shepparton. So where am I going to be next? Um, I'm going to be... Uh, fucking... What day is that? Feb 13th. What day is that? Yep. So, February 13th, I'm going to be in Bathurst, 14th Central Coast, then Port Macquarie, Toowoomba, Bundaberg, Rockhampton, Mackay, Townsville, and then we're finishing up in Cairns, and then after that, straight on to the Melbourne Comedy Festival. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for listening. Share this shit around. Share the clips. We're putting up... Uh, podcast clips every everywhere we can so uh, if you want to spread the word about this podcast and show your friends the clips is the best way to do that so thank you very much for listening and watching i'm lewis spears i will talk to you next sunday um the next episode of the podcast uh might be on the road uh or it might be in this studio i don't really know yet but either way it'll be next sunday and i will talk to you then i hope you uh have a very shit one support me on patreon you get access to everything very early all right how hard it gets i'm wearing jeans it don't matter how hard it gets i'm wearing jeans it don't matter how hard it gets i'm wearing jeans it don't matter how hard it gets I'm wearing jeans. I look ridiculous when I wear shorts. I get sunburned when I wear shorts. I get made fun of when I wear shorts. My legs look like a beanstalk. Had a 